to If These Walls Could Talk. And it's me, Wendy Stewart, here with you on this wonderful Wednesday. And yes, Tim Moss is not here today. He's still with his um, elderly dad and we miss him. And he'll be back next week. So Tim, if you get to tune in later, hello. We miss you. How is everybody? I hope you all have had a good week so far. This is what we call hump day, right? Just getting through the week. So um, I had to tell you something. I just, I don't know what it is this year, but I became completely obsessed with the Screen Actors Guild Awards and the films that were nominated, mostly because I was able to get a lot of them ahead of time. And I watched them. I actually watched every single one. And I, I don't know, I have to tell you this, everything, everywhere, all at once. I love that title. Okay. I've been like taking that. That is my life. Everything, everywhere, all at once. But um, I just, I, I'm going to make myself go watch it again because you can see my frustration. I just don't understand. There were so many really good films out there this year. And I just don't understand why that one, what it was about it. But anyway, as you know, it won a lot. We're all going to be all excited because Sunday night is the Oscars. I don't know if any of you were going to Oscar parties. I've actually been invited to two. So um, we'll see what kind of state of mind I'm in. But I I love going to these shows, especially when you see the movies and you know what's going on. Speaking of movies, uh, I am not a movie classic person. I like everything new, contemporary. But I actually watched All About Eve this Sunday, and it was really an extraordinary film. I have to say, um, you know, for its time, it was what you call a perfectly crafted film. And it was about a woman that gets obsessed with a movie star's life and decides she's going to take it over. And you know what? I had something like that happen to me. Not someone that was going to take over my movie star life, because Lord knows I'm not a movie star. I'm just me. Everything, everywhere, all at once. But it really happened to me. And when you see a film about it, you're like, oh my gosh, there are really people like this that exist. But enough about that. I have to tell you what's been going on at Pangea. And if you go online, you can now sign up for their newsletter. They have an email every week, which really makes it easy. It gives you like all the upcoming performances and you can just click on who you like and a voila, it takes you right to where you buy your tickets. It's all very, very easy. And you also, you know, it gives you time to even Google the artist, which I love. Saturday night, I was not here for Marie Connor's show. She was amazing. Not only was it sold out, I mean, I knew they would be hanging from the rafters for Maria Connor, but it co-starred another amazing performer, Jackson Sturkey, playing Maria's male self. The show was called Girl Shock after Maria Connor's book, which you can find on Amazon. And I, I just, I adore Maria Connor. She is a major talent. You're going to be hearing a lot more about her in the future. So stay tuned. You heard it right here from me, Wendy. And for those of you who tune into my other show, seven o'clock on Wednesday night, Triversity Talk, I have the one, the only beautiful drag artist, Diamante Habibi. And Diamante means, of course, diamond, you know, diamond, diamond that you look at. And Diamante Habibi is not only known for um, artistry, but is also a major master of belly dancing. Look at Shakira, because Diamante is going to give you a run for your money. Okay, enough about all of that. Uh, I love when I get someone that is what I consider the quintessential serious actress, because Lord knows I am the quintessential comedian, but... Um, I love somebody that has not only a legacy in TV and film and theater, but the diversity of female roles that this woman has, has played from China beach to judging Amy to law and order um, in Cyrano opposite Kevin Klein opposite David Bowie in elephant man. And then of course a pivotal role in Larry Kramer's the normal heart. I mean, I can't wait to talk to her because for an actress to have embraced so many different kinds of roles like that, and every single one she does is flawless. Without further ado, let's put our hands together. Yay for Conchetta Tomei. I don't have any sound. How are you doing there? I don't have sound. Are you good? Okay, hold on. We got, we got to get your audio going there. 
Okay, I need to hear you better. No, <clears throat> no. It was a glowing introduction, and everybody wants to hear all about you. So um, I'll continue to talk while we while get we your audio set up. Oh. Perfectly. Or is it good now? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, darling. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. You had dropped out temporarily. Oh. <laughs> I thought the mothership came down and beamed you up after that amazing intro that I gave you. So oh, I, just, I was reading your lips. Oh, Thank I you. love it. Good for you. you. That's I frequently do that with people. And you can only imagine what happened to me during COVID where everyone had their masks on, right? Yep. I couldn't, I couldn't read lips anymore. So <laughs> welcome to the show. Really, really thrilled to have you here. Thank you. All I'm right. Um, to be here. You have a resume. I was about to say as long as my arm, but it's like from my arm to out the door in Pangea. And <laughs> um you had a, a career before you became an actress. Can you talk a little bit about how you worked before and what turns you on to acting and what your secret to your success is? Oh, wow. Well, he's the secret to my success or she's the secret, you know, our Lord and the Blessed Mother yeah. and my mom and dad. Um, I guess I've always wanted to be an actress, Wendy, ever since I could remember but my mother's family, the Bertellis, I'm from Kenosha, Wisconsin. I hail from Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is right between Milwaukee and Chicago. And uh, I have a lot of educators on the Bertelli side of the family. Yeah. Uh, my uncle was superintendent of schools. I have uh, All my cousins are teachers. Um, my first cousins are teachers. My second cousins, my, godfa my godchild, Jim Bertelli in um uh, Las Vegas, right outside of Las Vegas, Hamilton, uh, Nevada. He's uh, a teacher as well as his wife. So there was tons of educators in my family. And my mother thought, no, this acting thing is good. And that's good. But you have to have an education. So well, they called it something to fall back on, too. Absolutely. Well, that's exactly what my mother said. I know you're channeling my mother, Wendy, because that's exactly <laughs> what she said. Her, There's something to fall back. You've got to have something to fall back on, Holly. If this acting gig doesn't work, and the reason uh, all my Midwestern friends, and I shout out to my friends in Kenosha, Milwaukee, Madison, all my relatives in Mich Michigan, the Tomeys, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they, uh, I went to the University of Wisconsin. So I got a degree in a uh, Bachelor of Science in Education and a minor in Communications. And, but I still wanted to be an actress. But then after that, I went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I taught seventh and eighth grade English and social oh, studies. And um, it was wonderful, but I had this feeling that something was unaccomplished in my life. I, there, there was a purpose that I wasn't fulfilling. And um, teaching was a wonderful, uh, wonderful gig as well, because I learned a lot from my students. And I have students that, um, yeah, that email me and that text me and well, I'm not going to tell you their name because then you'll think I'm a hundred. No, but, but um, you know what? That's the fact that first of all, you made such an impression. Okay. Teaching was not supposed to be your path. You knew that in your heart of hearts, right? right. But yes. the time you spent in it was to make an impression on all of these kids that came along the way. And that in itself is value. You know, thank you for saying that because when I get those letters, Wendy, they're like winning uh, an Emmy or an Oscar or a Tony. I mean, I have be I had beautiful students. I learned a lot from them. My seventh and eighth graders in actually Fox Point, Wisconsin. I taught inner city. I wanted to know where I was needed the most. Inner City was my first year in my hometown of Kenosha, Wisconsin at Frank School. Um, second year was Muskego, middle class, uh, which I think is a backbone of this country. And then uh, a very elite area, Fox Point. And that was half of my kids were Jewish, half of the, my kids were Christian. So I'd always put Hanukkah boards and, right. and then <laughs> Christmas boards up at Christmas time, you know, my bulletin boards. But you know, I, I received beautiful things that they remember that I don't remember. I wow. mean, Miss Tomei, you know, you put your class in a round circle. Andy Linda, who was from the Czech Republic, he was an immigrant in my class. And he remembered when I put my the, the chairs in a circle so all the kids could see each other. He remembered when I played, when I was studying poetry with them, I would play James Taylor. 
He said, I can't listen to a James Taylor record without You're thinking, thinking of you. thinking of you. Um, um, I, uh, it, Linda I Lamont in Marin County, Gary Kohlenberg in uh, Wisconsin, all of these kids that I have received. And I went back to Milwaukee years ago and I had breakfast with some of my kids at the Pancake House in Milwaukee. It was hysterical. You were already I, an established actress. It's an honor and back. an honor. Were you already an established actress when you went back and had pancakes with them? Yes, I was. I had been on uh, China incredible. Beach. And they yeah. probably had been following your your career. I mean, you know what? Who so gets sweet. to do that? People can win Oscars, but who gets to do what you what you did, that you can be here and share that with all of us? That is a gift in itself. Well, that very, that's very kind. I See, had I been, um, I'm an only child, just to, uh, just to say that up front. And I think that an only child um dynamic with their family is is somewhat different than those who have many children and siblings my mother couldn't have any more so i was it right it took 72 hours to come through the canal right and, i was, you know, was <laughs> <You're there. laughs> entrance into the world <laughs> yeah, this this one woman said she had met her somewhere and she came up to me and she wanted my autograph and i said thank you very much and she said what sign are you and i said a capricorn and That's my I sign, said, by the way. Pardon? That's my sign. Are you? What, when's your birthday? January 15th. Oh, my gosh. Mine's December 30th. Wow. Wow. Capricorns get along great with other Capricorns and Tauruses. They re they, oh, my mother was a Taurus. Yes. Oh, there you go. See? My mom was a Taurus, May 19th. And my mother-in-law was a Taurus. I just want to tell everybody, you're watching If These Walls Could Talk with our amazing guest, Conchetta Tomei. Thank you. Please continue. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, I went to do, uh, I, I honored my mother and father. That was important. My mother and father, my father was from Michigan, the Tomei family, and uh, my mother, the Brutelli family, was from Wisconsin. So they met during the war, 40, 1945, when I was born. Okay, I said it. Um, I'm, seven. you it. <laughs> I'm 77. My drama teacher said, Conchetta, she was from Russia. Conchetta, never show your age. Are you crazy, darling? Never, never tell your age. Uh, well, of course, I never listened, but she was a great acting coach at the Goodman School of Drama. So anyway, um, if my mother and father said what I'm trying to get to, dear Wendy, and thank you again for having me on this sweet, sweet show. Oh, and I, I have to say, before I go any further, the shout out to my mystical muse, my doc doll, Lori Towers. Yes, a and shout out to, uh, and I was, of course, going to bring Lori's name up because she's really amazing. Uh, she's and responsible for all of this. Right, and it's Women's History Month. And yes. I mean, who else but Lori, you know? Musician, feminist, entrepreneur, Black fitness belt. guru, and you know what? An amazing friend to all the women that yeah. she raises. She raises women up, and we have to remember we need to all do that with each other. Oh, absolutely. She's uh, she's like a Saint Joan, you know, Joan of Arc. She takes up that sword and right. she fights those battles, and right. I, that's what I love yeah. about her. Absolutely, and she will be half an hour early to whatever gig she's booked for, and that is a true professional. <laughs> it's a true professional. <laughs> it's true. Okay, oh so gosh! Well, hi, Lori. I know she's watching. She's cleared her schedule yes. to watch me, so I said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make you proud, Doc you, Doll." You I call her Doc Doll so, because. So she, you were talking about your parents and how yeah, they my mom and dad, and more. because you know they were uh, Italian Americans, they were born here. But, you know, I knew my Italian grandfathers and they were broken English and whatever. So there was a huge traditional uh, background that I had with my Italian heritage and that I respected and that I honored. And so had they said, no, Holly, all of my Midwestern friends call me Holly. And then my 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 uh, professional New Yorkers and uh, Chicagoans and here in Hollywood or call me Conchetta. Uh, which was and my grandmother's name. Where Holly came from? Is that a middle name, a nickname? What? Tell me. Where no, I was born five days after Christmas, so, Holly so December thirtieth. So my mother didn't know what to do with Conchetta. She knew she wanted to <laughs> name me after her mother, and that she said she heard "Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly" on the radio, and great story. There I was. <laughs> there, there you do. There so, um, anyway, I. Um, 
Traditional I, Italian family. Thank you. Um, I If they had said to me, Wendy, you know, your dad worked so hard and my father worked so hard. My dad was a, a, Italian. a I, I know law, I law enforcement officer and a great yeah. cop, great cop, uh, great cop, um, principled, loving, kind, out there. He really be believed in service and protecting all, right. all, all, everyone. Right. You know, all inclusive for um because he had a great heart so but he always would get part-time jobs i said well daddy i want to go to drama school and he said oh my god i gotta go back and get another part-time job because he put me through the university of wisconsin and then i said i wanted to be an actress and he said well there are the pros and there are the cons yes. holly but the cons far outweigh the pros so but your mom said we got to give her a chance so Let's give her that chance. Had they said, no, you have to stay with teaching, I would have respected that. And coming from the background, Italian, you know. Uh, I would have honored that. And, yeah. and a lot of ways, right? Yes. Um, amazing. Because I had already paid for my education. Of course. And amazing that your mom was enough out of the box that she looked at her daughter and yes. knew that, that you had to do that. Because I even talking to you, it would have been eating at you. You know, there's yes. nothing worse than someone, and, and we run into them all the time, the unrealized dream. Yep. They never get to realize their dream. Dream deferred, right? You and I are dream news. deferred. I love that. You and I are cut from the same cloth. My mother wanted me to get a job in the phone company. Okay. Ah. Yeah. And I come from, uh, you know, uh, we're Irish and Russian, my family, Jewish ah, and Protestant. That's my husband. But yes. I grew up in an Italian, Irish, blah, blah, blah neighborhood, right? But same thing. People from those times, you know, you didn't become an actress. You went out there, you got the job, and that's that's what you did. So your mom was in your court, and you took off for drama school. Right. I went to uh, the Goodman School of Drama in Chicago, okay. and I auditioned there. And then they sent me... Um, <laughs> They sent me a letter and I thought, oh, this this can't be true. I actually didn't get in. So I put it in my uh, in my pajama drawer. And then a month later, they said, well, where's your entrance fee? And I thought, oh, my God, I got in. They were serious. That's that letter that they said, I just thought it was like a form letter. And I just threw it in my pajama drawer. And I thought, well, I just didn't get in. And then they said, well, we need your $50 tuition fee. Can you imagine $50? Back in the day, right? If Back in the day. Yeah. Okay. If, if, yeah. If those but walls were talking. It's amazing, though, in the telling of this story to me, you wanted this so bad. And yet the break had already come. And you threw it in your pajama drawer. You didn't read. You know what I'm saying? Like, what yes, was going I did. on that you, you know... Wouldn't well, I think that, that whole thing, you know, all kids, I think in this country, no matter what color they are, what, uh, whatever, uh, the beliefs they had, whomever have, whomever they believe their God or goddess to be, yeah. you know, there's always some little voice inside of us that, you know, always questions ourselves: Am I good enough? Am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Am I talented enough? Or oh, maybe, that, oh, they must have voice. They made a, they must really have, made have to mistake. shoot down. Right. They must have made a, a, a mistake because surely they, they wouldn't want me. The story about Joan Rivers, even when she was famous, taking toilet paper from the bathroom. Okay. I, that sticks out in my mind. And wow. I was a kid from the Bronx from, you know, working family Wow. It's always like you think to yourself, oh, did they make a mistake? They should, you know, even honest to God, Conchetta, even to this day, it's something that I, I fight against, you know, oh, really? They really wanted yes. me? Yes, yes, we always do. But you know what? I only think that makes us better. I think it makes us work harder oh. at whatever gifts have been given to yeah. us from, you know, our Lord or whoever, as I say, whoever people perceive them to be. When you said that my mother was very um on top of it and she was you know on many many levels i mean i'd say i'd go sleep over to somebody's house and i said mama they're mommy there's um they're protestant and you know i'm roman catholic and i still practice catholicism i say my rosaries i yeah. pray for my friends i say novenas you name it i do it and um the bottom line is my mother said holly god's everywhere so oh, my God. if, they go, a, if they go to a service at 11 o'clock, you go to a service. You don't want to offend them in any way. And my mother, my mother said the source is everywhere. 
and and love that's the source the source right. is love so you would never humiliate or embarrass your girlfriend's mother and father by saying well i can't go to church because i'm catholic that yeah. she was really so i mean i went to synagogues i went to <laughs> baptist weddings i went to you name it i went to it and it gave me such a wonderful feeling of being loved yes not only by my friends but I had like a a, a real spiritual experience okay, on those different okay. levels with all of those different religions. But your mother was so ahead of her, of her time. time. You know, she even was. even now, there's people that are very polarized because of whatever religion they are or identify Absolutely. with. And um, you were blessed. You you know you said you you practice Catholicism, which is great. And you're also open and respectful of other religions, so much so if you're invited to a different house of worship, you'll you'll go. Oh, absolutely. Friends. I know. I, I totally get that. That is that's huge. Absolutely huge. Because I think that you limit yourself. Right. If you stay in that little box, you know, you have to go outside of that box in, in order to, you know, encompass and embrace what comes towards you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But There's you have something to... in you that lets you go out of the box. So many people are afraid to go out of their comfort zone, their box. They want their worlds, right, to be the small and safe. And uh, you know what? They want to be with, quote, unquote, their own kind. Isn't that from, like, West Side Story? Stick to your own kind. Yes. Still, now, in, in this day and age, um, I live in New York <laughs> City because we are so mixed here. and it's. <clears throat> I love New York City. Right, but Love you go other places, and it just amazes me that people do not want to move beyond where they are. I'm going to break for a second. Ladies okay, dear. Thank you so much for watching If These Walls Could Talk today with our fascinating guest, oh. <laughs> Tomei. Ooh. <laughs> so you, um, you started going to drama school. Right. I went to uh, Goodman Theater School in Chicago. Um and there were a lot of wonderful, you know, Harvey Keitel and uh, Linda Hunt and um, Geraldine uh, Page. There were a lot of wonderful yeah, you know, it's graduates. A, it's a uh, Joey Mantegna mm -hmm. um, went to Goodman. And so uh, I went there for three years and then I, I, I got a scholarship uh, and that helped my mom and dad. So <laughs> my dad didn't have to. He worked hard. My father was never with that part time job he had. Yes. I mean, he, life. you know, so I had a, uh, then I went to I lived at the three arts club, which was an arts club that, um, you know, singers and dancers and actresses and whatever lived at. It was not co-ed. It was just uh, when, um, women. Uh, the, it was called the three arts club um, on the east side of Chicago. Wow. And um, they'd give you breakfast in the morning and I'd leave in the morning and then it would be a whole day. You know, you'd get exercise and then voice and then scene study. Uh, and I had a great uh, Dr. Belly Itkin was my coach, my acting coach, brilliant, uh, brilliant acting coach and um, movement, dance, you know, all sorts of things. And it was just like I was heaven like and I was 26 years old. I mean, what really? I, how how cool is that? Everybody was 18. Okay. Oh, so they good. just came from high school and I had already had a whole career. I had <laughs> yeah, a you whole did. another life before that. I'm sorry, but 26 is, is so young. There's so many people entering into the performing business. <laughs> 26, 36. That's and right. I, you know, I worked with a woman uh, on a, a movie two weeks ago. She was... 71 retired nurse and wanted to do this her whole life. And guess what? She was doing it, you know? So yeah. when I grew up, the, you know, people were, Oh, you're too old or you're too this or you're too that. We need to learn to let go of the two T O O you're not, yeah. yes. you know, you can jump in anytime. 26 Conchetta is young. And here you were in Chicago and you're living at this, house with all other actresses. I mean, what a wonderful time in your yes. life. Yes, and artists, other artists, yeah. you know, singers, ballerinas. Yeah. Uh, it was just people. wonderful, you know. Uh, one of my one of my uh, friends that I met there was Alzir. She was from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. So there were people from all over, but they were in the arts. 
And that's what was so, you know, you could draw from not only acting, but you could draw from dance and you could draw from people that were studying film and especially the ones that were, you know, um, the ballerinas. I mean, talk about discipline. Oh, my God. Well, I, and it, it sounds like, as I said, your roles have been so diverse and so fleshed out and whoever you're playing is 100%. And now that you tell me your Thank background, you. I, I, I understand, you know, there are actors that can be terrific. They can be technical and mm -hmm. not they don't need to have as many dimensions. Their technical expertise shows. But you were drawing. Look at what where you were drawing from. You had all these different people from all these different backgrounds. And your mother made you a sponge, you know, to yes. go out there, take it in. What could be better for an actress than that? No, not anything. And I really had very, very supportive parents. My mom, you know, only went to seventh grade. You know, she was the youngest of seven, seven children, and but she was an avid reader. I mean, she read Michener, she read William F. Buckley, whatever. And my dad was a wonderful uh, artist as well and poet and songwriter. So that I had a combination of it was a win-win situation because one, the main thing was an enormous amount of love and I was just as long as I was happy. And I think that was <clears throat> very important. And I remember hearing Geraldo saying just the other night on one news program, you know, you're only um, as happy as your unhappiest child. Am I quoting that right? And my mother, it was very, um, really important that I would be at peace with whatever it is I had. That's why, and I knew and I loved. And that's why my mom and dad knew me so well. They knew what made me click. They knew what made me, I wasn't really unhappy. And that's when I went to my mother and father and asked for permission. I don't know any 26 year old yeah, that really? would ask permission in this day and age. It was different than, not that I was born in the stone age, but you no, know, no, I, what, we in the, different. So yeah, this um, was in the seventies. So you graduate from Goodman, you start yep. auditioning. How soon from when you graduated from there did you land China Beach? Uh, well, oh gosh, that goes, I started off in theater. That yeah. that was the, the, the stage work, the theater work for me was always uh, the most important place to learn. Right. And uh, that was my first love, the stage. And it's also and the most difficult too. So I went to, I did theater in Chicago. And then, um, although I hadn't been um, there early enough uh, for uh, Steppenwolf, which is what John Malkovich and Gary right. Sinise, and I worked with Malkovich and I uh, on Space Force with Steve Carell on Netflix three years ago. And I said, gee, I said, I would have killed John to be in, you know, Steppenwolf, but you guys started that after I had left Chicago. Then I went to New York and then I did, you know, four Broadway shows, nine off Broadway shows. Then I came to California in 1985. The last show I did in New York was The Normal Heart. My, it was Larry Brad Kramer's Davis. show. You were opposite Brad Davis in that show. Yes, I was. Beloved Brad. Um, but, but brilliant. What, beloved what was Brad. that experience like for you? <clears throat> well, it was uh, a hands-on happening as, it, as I could come close to explaining it. Um, because at that time during the AIDS crisis, it was the 80s. And Linda Laubenstein in San Francisco, she was the front runner. She discovered that virus in 81. I knew who she was. We had uh, we worked with an AIDS organization at the time. So I knew all the doctors who were on the forefront. Wow. I, I, when I was reading your bio and I read that, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And she passed away when she was 45. Yeah. And um, so yeah. at the time it was 80, 1985, well, she discovered AIDS in 81. So AIDS was all over the place in New York and people were dying yep. and nobody knew why they were dying. And all of those, uh, those numbers of all those young men, bright, young. Many of them were my friends, my men. husband and I met with I'm, three phone books. I tell everyone that, you know, those little address books. Yes. Yes. Three of those I, I, I went through and I would try and keep wow. me meeting new people and making friends. And then two years later, they, it was such a horror what was going on, but it was pivotal, pivotal in how AIDS was looked at 
and how it was treated. How amazing that that you got to play her my god yes it was an well that was that was a talk about the normal heart it was very you know all our hearts in that cast with uh dw moffett and tom martyrosian and larry lott who we lost and uh brad who we lost um it was you know all of those our hearts were beating as one mm -hmm. so i mean talk about the normal heart it was an ensemble heart that was beating as one for every performance. I did it for seven months. Joe Papp, God bless the dearly departed Joe Papp. Yeah. You know, he ran it when he was losing money and he didn't care because he knew how important this was, you know, to be seen and to be given, to be put out there. You know, Joe Papp was, um, uh, he was, uh, he was something else. I he mean, was a mensch, you know, anyone else. He was a mensch, yeah. And I just mensch. loved him. I never called him uh, Joe. I always called him Mr. Pap. And I did four wow. shows for him. I mean, I did A Private View. I did Richard III for him with Kevin Klein as King Richard. And I as uh, Queen Elizabeth. And then I did um, Fenn with David Strathairn, uh, also at The Public. And then The Normal Heart. So, but the normal heart was just a, you know, it was a trailblazer on so many, oh, so many different levels. And then I would, um, they would, there would be groups of the gay men's high, health crisis. The, uh, GM, the GMHC. Yes. And, oh, I just um, adored every single one of them that I met. And um, then there would be groups of young men that would come to see the normal heart, a matinee. And then they'd say, well, does the actor, do any of the actors want to go to lunch with us between shows? And I always, I always went, um, Brad didn't cause he was, you know, that laboring or he really carried that play, the laboring or that play. So he had to rest in between shows, eat a little bit cause Brad ate very little and uh, maybe to have a bowl of soup. We'd go to a, a Jewish jelly over by um, the public theater. And uh, so I'd go to lunch. David Brooks also was in it. And I went to lunch with these groups that would take like a field trip to the theater. And it was astonishing. I mean, these bright, uh, strong, uh, creative, sweet, kind, you know, strong men. Strong men. Sitting there with, you know, you could see the makeup that yeah. they would put on um, yeah. the Kaposi sarcoma, you know, those spots, those purple spots. It was just, and, you know, not to see them, just engage in conversation, then go back and do it all over again in the play. It was an out-of-body experience, really. But to me, it was a wonder, it was a spiritual experience because many of my friends have passed away from AIDS. Of course. Three of the actors in the Norma Hart passed away. Yeah. And, I just think that I was performing. I would like to think I was performing service. You know, it was one small voice in a sea of all those voices that were screaming out and crying for and help. Shida, it was such um, an, a way of serving, okay, and um, communicating and raising awareness. Everyone knew about that play. And look at the role that you had. You were raising awareness. I, you know, I talk about this all the time. Actors can really change things and affect things in a political way without necessarily having to be political. Okay. Just by performance, what people took away from the show and what people took away from you performing in that show is huge. You were able to give a gift. Well, I was on Broadway at the time doing noises off and wow. they had not found Dr. Bruck, Bruckner yet. I'm a Bruckner, which is the character's scripted name, but it was really Linda Laubenstein, yeah, as yeah. you know. And um, so I was doing noises off, and my agent from ICM at the time said, you want to audition? And I thought, oh, gosh, I don't, I don't know. I said, you know, it was... And then a friend of mine who was gay, he said, Consetta, you would be doing such a service if you did this play, because it was a... Um, you know, noises off is just wacko. I did it with Carol Shelley and we had a great time doing it. Great and then you read the normal heart and it's just another turn, you know, it's going into the dark side. And I thought, wow, can I, can I do this? 
also, I was not the first choice. They, I think Joe Papp wanted um, Linda Hunt because she wow. was physically more like Linda Laubenstein. And she absolutely was. I could definitely see Linda Hunt playing that, that role. Yes. She and she didn't, and she didn't take it. There were another big, big, huge name names that I won't mention uh, who were asked to do Ned Weeks, which is Larry Kramer really in real life that Brad Davis ultimately took. But I mean, huge names in New York theater at the time that just turned it down. They didn't want any part of it. Do you think it was they were afraid of becoming stigmatized? Because Yeah, I think so. I, because at that time, there was a huge stigma. Yep. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and I, and even with Brad, I mean, Brad waited years later until he died to call everybody and mm -hmm. thank them yeah. for everything that they'd given him in his life. And he said, I'm leaving now and I have to say goodbye. And, you know, Susan Bluestein, his beautiful wife explains that. And, uh, you know, the book that she wrote of him, I think it was after midnight and, um, and he calls everybody, but he's very weak on the other end of the phone to say goodbye and how much he loves him. And that that's when everybody then sort of knew. So he knew it was a stigma. So he didn't want to say that he had it because he didn't think he'd ever work anymore. He, he actually probably wouldn't have. Remember what it was was like. Right. That, right. You know, you kept it a, a secret. Right. And he kept a lot of it. people that did, they just wanted to work as actors or, or models and you right. could not let that out there. How long was Brad sick for? I loved Brad. Well, from, yeah, he was uh, 1985. He received, he could have received it before, but when we were working, that's when he left us after the seven months uh, that I played it with him. Um, 85 to 91. He passed away in 91. Wow. And uh, so he had it all that just Time. on the cusp, this is what kills me. It was just on the cusp of those cocktails. And mm, I knew people yes. were getting the Dallas Buyer drugs, which were the predecessor of the cocktail. And there was a doctor here. There was a good friend that was giving them out in New York. You know, all those people are alive today. If you were lucky enough to get those off-label drugs and you um, knew who to go to. And yeah. then uh, there's so many people that just like, damn, they didn't like slip through under the rope. And Brad Davis was one of them. And he was a wonderful actor. He was only 41. Yeah, he was. Well, you know what? He shared the stage. He was a generous actor. He shared the stage. And, you know, I none of us were names at that time. I mean, I had done Tommy Toon's Cloud Nine. I had done The yeah. Elephant Man with Bowie. But I mean, basically, we were, he was the star of the play, was Brad Davis. And he never once acted like a star. He was as down to earth as the day is long. And hearing you know, he would just. He was wonderful. I know he's one of my angels. He gave me before he oh, left, uh, uh, you know, a tape uh, that you put into a tape recorder, not a not a VHS, right. very yeah. outdated, yeah. not a yeah. you know what I mean, not a CD, a little a tape, and he put all the songs that he loved from his heart, and he gave that to me. Oh, um, so personal. and I just found it recently, and I was just yeah. so moved by it. So I believe spirit travels, Wendy. And I think oh, those people, in your life, and I believe that those people are still with us. I want to um, want to play. I have a clip of uh, from one of your. Oh boy, here your, we go. A short little clip I want to play. All right, dear. It's very uplifting. It's funny, and I, I'm glad we had this conversation because it'll show people your range that you have. So, uh, Chauncey, take it away. <laughs> Sorry, Muriel's doctor had us waiting for over an hour. I honestly don't understand why they are so off with scheduling. Do they think we have nothing better to do than to sit in their waiting rooms all oh, day? There's something that I could do. They spent Whoop. And the whole appointment talking about how she's coping with Mel being gone. I mean, you can't blame them for wanting to have a relationship with their patients, right? I mean, Muriel's probably been going there for a long time. Contrary to popular belief, most of us do not enjoy being at the doctor's office all day. I just Look, mean that we've just got to get that money from her. All right, she needs her independence, and I cannot keep driving her around all day. Mm -hmm. And you need to show her how to order a car on her phone. Oh, you mean like Lyft or whatever? I told her I would do it, but she needs to get a new phone. 
time out, ladies. Helen, do we have a place yet? Yes. Oh, I think it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> How are we going to do it? Because I was thinking we could wear masks, like in Point Break. What's Point Break? Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves, early 90s, surfers. It is awesome. Oh, he's delicious. Mm -hmm. Did you see the one where he falls for Diane Keaton? Of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. But Point Break is about bank robbers, surfing mm. bank robbers. Okay, they wear masks of ex-presidents and they only go for the drawers so they're in and out in 90 seconds. Stay there! Hit the carpet, baby! Hit the carpet! This is a bit aggressive. We're robbing a bank, not joining a quilting bee. What do you expect? Hey, why do I have to wear Tricky Dick and you get to wear Hillary Clinton? We're first ladies an option? She should have been president. I'm not happy with this. I'm going to Denny's. But we <laughs> have to wear masks, okay? Not, not those maybe but something to cover our faces. Oh, I just don't like the idea of storming in like that. I was thinking of something a little more genteel, more calm. How about this? We casually walk in. I make eye contact with the security guard as we... Yes, deliver the shipment via the newly committed... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> Leah Beth um, and Rebecca Shapiro wrote and directed those, that uh, little indie. It's <clears throat> very, very funny. It's very yeah. funny. The dialogue is freaking great. It is. They, and those girls were wonderful. They're terrific. Wonderful. But the three of you, the chemistry that you have and the strong characterizations, I just, it's such a funny, funny clip. And I'm glad <laughs> we played it after our um, discussion about the normal heart, you know, in, in the world, everything is yin and yang. So if I do a little yin, I balance it out with a, a little yang, as they say. Perfect. So, um, my God, we're only up to now, which part did you, um, we were talking about China beach. Now we right. have you on Broadway, you're doing theater. When did China, China beach happen? I love okay. that. show, by the way, thank you. I do too. Well, you know, um, they fought the war. We just told their stories. Right. Um, and two friends uh, that I went to high school with, you know, died there, David Leet and Raleigh Hewitt. And I was in high school with them. So you never forget that. And okay. Troy Evans, who was my love interest in China Beach, he was all, he was a Vietnam War veteran. Was he, an actual Vietnam vet. Wow. Yes, he, he toured a year and a half in Vietnam. And when we were at the wall for the reunion episode, the very last episode of China Beach, you know, we were standing at the wall and, you know, Troy, you know, just, uh, just tears silently flowed down from all those memories. He, there was no acting needed. You could read the subtext. You could read the horror and the sadness and the loss and um, it was devastating. I mean, it, 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 to, to actually see that happening and know that this man had Literally. been in the trenches there in Vietnam yeah. was uh, an amazing, and he, he, he's an amazing actor, Troy Evans, as are all of those wonderful actors that were. All, with all of them. Many Beach was not my first series. My first series, when I first came here, was Max Headroom. Which they're oh going to do a makeup with Matt Fuhrer, Amanda Pace, okay. Jeffrey Tambor. And um, we did 13 episodes of that. And then I auditioned and I got China Beach. And I was so honored to do the show. That's it was, show. you know, and we, because John Sacred Young, who we just lost a couple of years ago, yes. who was the co creator, along with Billy Broyles, who's still alive. And, um, they, he had a, a, John Sacred Young had a cousin named Doug who had passed away in Vietnam. He was killed in Vietnam. And he, it, it left such an impact on John's young, 
uh, John Young's life that he wrote about Vietnam. He, w- he created the series China yeah. Beach. He brought in uh, veterans. He brought in nurses. He brought in um, soldiers uh, and women soldiers. All all personnel who worked in Vietnam and served there. That's an amazing And that's story. where all of our stories came from. So it was a very accurate um, an accurate portrayal yeah. of what was happening in Nam and what was happening with nurses in Vietnam uh, serving. And we had a nurse, uh, Jan Wyatt. She was our uh, consultant and she was a young nurse in Vietnam. And so we'd have to learn how to do IVs and how to do injections and do oxygen and uh, uh, stitching and what was absolutely authentic on China Beach was absolutely authentic because we got it from all of those beautiful veterans that did survive and honored the ones that didn't. That I didn't. love you telling this story because there's, there's so many people I know that love that show. And most of us do not know that, you know, we know everyone was aware of the Vietnam War. and We know that anyone that was around then knew people that were in it. We read the newspapers, but this, what you're giving us is such a personalized view of the backstory that happened for um, China Beach, which I, I never knew. All right. I have to throw this one at you. Hot Lips. Who is Hot Lips based on? (laughs) Well, that Hot Lips was based MASH, right? Right, right. That was MASH. That and was Nash, but it was the same. Also, the whole um, war. Thing. Oh, you mean Mark Helgenberger? Yeah. The yeah. the um, yeah. I don't. That that was a little. But then you know that probably did happen because a lot of people thought, well, I just didn't understand why there was a prostitute, you know, on the base. Well, of course, there were. My God, but during those duh times, duh right there were yeah um, absolutely Heidi Fleiss. Here we are, you know, they're all over uh, the place. I, my God, Heidi Fleiss. Um, yeah. Just but um, for one second here, um, yes. I'm here with our fabulous guest, Concetta Tomei. We're talking about everything and anything, and we'll be right back. Thank you. So um, we're on the last five minutes of where you can talk about anything you want because the show is 45 minutes and then another 15 that run after. All but, right. Well. Um, if you want to tell us about current projects that you're working on in recent project. I, I want everybody to hear it. I just, you know what? You keep working. You're an inspiration. You well, keep thank working, you, Wendy. You keep turning it out. You are a true Capricorn. I have to tell you that. The goat going up that mountain, right? right. The mountains continual mm-hmm. can set. Why is that? <laughs> Why do we I think know? that without the mountain, you can't ever get to heaven. I love, I, okay. I, I love that, but you, you know, know, I mean, without are. hard work and um, the, you know, the opportunities and the chances that come our way, they're all blessings. I agree. The hard work, the hard work is, is um, just goes, you know, hand in hand with the chance and the opportunity. So you're juggling all three of these. If you're lucky enough to get these opportunities, to get these auditions. And, you know, women have a hard time, especially in my age group, you know. Um, Now, Betty White didn't have a hard time, but she she was a personality. And I knew Betty and I loved her dearly. And she asked me to do the SPCALA event to raise money. And so she and I uh, and Peter McNichol um, had done the um, had done the uh, SPCLA event here in Los Angeles to raise money for animals. And, you know, she just loved them. And she was also an only child. Also an only child. Very, very interesting. But and um, her parents were, you know, very close, very close. And um, she loved right. animals. Her parents Betty loved animals. Personality, okay. And yep. if you look at um, TV and film and theater nowadays, there's a lot more women driving the train. Yes, um, thank God. You know, thank Reese, God for that. Reese Witherspoon, Drew Barrymore, um, yep. uh, Sandra Bullock. You and there's movies that you haven't even heard of. Well, but they're on Netflix, right? And you see that it was produced by 
of yes, and very, Gina Davis is re yeah, really some very right out there. There, you know, so I think that that's where we're going now. And yeah, to your point, uh, bless you for being such an inspiration. You're you're working. You appreciate the work. I think you have been that way your entire life. You're humble about it. I think it is. It's a well, gift from above. And well, thank um, you. And and so are you, Wendy. And so hi. is this lovely show that you give us all <laughs> an opportunity to be on and to share our stories because that's what it's all about. It's about sharing our stories and then fighting the good fight. Yes. And, and, and good luck, Brendan Fraser. I played his mother in an independent film called 20 bucks. Linda Hunt was in it. I was in it. I played his mom and I was so happy to see that he was nominated, but you know, congratulate everybody out there. I, I agree. Follow your dream Let's and live your dream. Uh, Follow your dream and live your dream. And we are going to be right back in okay. two minutes, but we are saying goodbye to this part of our show. I want to thank you, Conceta. Don't go anywhere. All right. <laughs> thank you, everyone. everyone. And we'll Tim Moss, I'm so sorry I didn't get to meet you, you Tim. Would you would completely love Tim. And uh, he can reach you by email, too, and he'll see the segment. Okay. okay. Thank you, everybody. Take care. God bless. Mwah. <laughs> and now we're back again. Um, and I always start off this segment. I love reading the comments, which I can't see without my glasses. Uh, Suze Genero, who's an amazing designer, tuned in and says, hello, Laurie Towers, two of my favorite ladies on the air today. Happy That's International sweet. Women's Day, right? And happy International Women's Day to you, Laurie. You are a pivotal person. Ike yeah. Valley, our amazing friend and comedian. Great interview. Love 20 bucks. You ah. were in, yeah. Oh, she saw, isn't that lovely? Yeah. I can, it was a long time ago. Well, you know, we, long time ago, let me tell you, with what we do, it has no age on it, That's right? That's right. It's, like it's ageless. Months. Films are in perpetuity. Victor Santiago, hello. And Nancy Davis Kessler, bittersweet. And here's where I become um, impaired because I'm not so good at scrolling this. I don't know why it doesn't scroll for me. It scrolls for Tim. So if I missed any of your comments, um, you know I am technically deficient. <laughs> there, you, there you go. But I do the best I can, right? Right. So, um, well, you're talking to a technical idiot, so I completely <laughs> Yeah. You did fine. I don't my know what happened my to tech you guy. when you first came on. It wasn't you. It's the poltergeists that are around us. That's what I say. We're in this crazy electronic. What do you think is happening with spirits and the electronics? Consider? Really? Come on. Really? I know. I Well, I, you know, I, there's so many things that cannot be explained in this universe. Thank and you. so why explain them? Just embrace them. So um, tell me what you what you can tell me that you're working on now or what you're looking forward to um, in the future. Well, I'm looking forward to roles that, you know, um, that are well written. You know, <laughs> the writing to me is everything. Um, there's some things come my way and um, and what comes my way that is not well written. I just don't take I don't work just for the sake of working. I work for the sake of throwing out some kind of um, light, you know, into the universe. I love it. To be a part of everybody else's lights that are being thrown out into the universe and trying to dispel all of that darkness that we're surrounded by now. So I don't choose the darkness. I choose to walk in the light. Lori Towers, I know, chooses to walk in the light. Oh, I've got many it. sisters in the light in Wisconsin. You know, Janie, Rosemary, uh, Diane, uh, Marty, Margie, all my great good friends in Wisconsin. These are all my sisters who walk in the light. Melinda, Arlene, Anne in Brooklyn. You know, and, Patty. and continue to walk in the light even if it's challenging, um, I am right there with you. I completely agree. And what all of us and your sisters in Wisconsin can do, each one of us on any given day can touch somebody, one person. Yes. Okay, not a whole yes. world. We can each touch one person and affect their lives in a positive way. Absolutely. Our, our rewards that we get from it are, are huge after that. 
Um, how did you become involved in animal advocacy? You know, you're talking to a wacko with two rabbits, a cockatoo and a chihuahua. Nobody is in a cage. They all go in the litter box except for the chihuahua that marks everywhere. <laughs> how did you how did you get uh, so involved? He must be an he must be an actor in another life signing his <laughs> autographs, right? That's brilliant, <laughs> right? They have to leave their mark everywhere. That's that's right. That's his autograph. Um <laughs> <laughs> in case you not, you know, in case you don't pay any attention, then he's not in the room. You know he is. Um, I mean, I've, they let you know they're in the room. Come absolutely. Um, I, my dad rescued animals as a cop, and um, when he'd be directing traffic, and there'd be a shepherd that would run by, you know, my dad would stop all the cars and go get the dog, and then he wouldn't bring them to the pound or the shelter. He would bring them home. God and we them. would have um, dogs and cats and rabbits and you name it. And my dad had a great heart. And also my cousin, Tammy uh, Tomei Marinos in Michigan. And my cousin, Sandy, that's the Tomei part of the family. They were all nuts, animal you. nut and what animal lovers. Yeah. Because then as I went to New York and saw all these stray animals and animals that were being dumped and abused and abandoned. And I just thought these, it reminded me of my dad who, you know, went out of his way to rescue animals that were in need. So I always told my husband, my beloved husband, Norman Moltar, uh, who's a, a retired maritime attorney, and I would be lost if he was not in my life, not oh. only on a technical level. You would never have seen the show with me on it if it wasn't for Norman. Yeah, so Norman, wait, he made it happen. He's my today. tech guy. Okay. He's and, and my husband does the lighting on the show. My Alan and your Norman. Thank you, guys. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Alan. Thank you, Normie. Thank you. Um, but I... I've often told Norman, I said, you know, animals have no voice and no choice. Right. They have no voice and no choice. So we must be their stewards. We oh, must be their earth, great. their earth angels, you know, and they are. Now, you, you have to prioritize because people rescue for sometimes, you know, some animals want to be running free and wild. And then you see three little kittens on a corner or under a bush somewhere and uh, you think you have to do something. That is your responsibility as uh, a caretaker of the planet because they're okay. part of that's, this planet. Okay. That's you and me. And I have a friend in the comments, Nancy Davis Kessler, who rescued three alpacas. All right. She has numerous dogs. Her, and she's, wow. uh, she's one of us, right? Yes. She even had a guinea hen that adopted her three alpacas that she wrote a book about. They oh, had, how beautiful. Yeah, I know. It was so beautiful. But what, okay, what makes us feel so responsible? I mean, I was the kid that brought home sick pigeons, any kind of sick bird. Oh, my you? dad raised homing pigeons. Ho Flyers. Us feel that, um, you know, we see an injured animal or we see an animal that doesn't have someone with them. Then we're worried. Oh, my God, they're astray. What can we do? Why do we have that red light go off in our heads? Well, I know it goes off in my head because I know it's the right course of action. It's right. It's my father's genes in me. Yeah. And my mother, my mother fed everybody, you know, right. so there was no way that she was not going to feed whatever we brought home. And my dad rescued people and he rescued animals. So okay. I have that in my genetic code and I honor that because that's what I came in with. You know, sometimes you, there are no answers to why you just have to do what you feel Your is heart. the right course of action. And I think all of us, you know, um, all of us really were we're really one. I, I try not to separate anyone, uh, any one faction, any one color, any one religion. You know, it's like um, all dogs are beautiful, even the ones with three legs. You know, um, all animals have something to teach us. And so I think that we always learn from whatever we rescue whether it's a student, if I rescued any of my oh, students. Yeah, and some right. of, them of, course had you, of course you did. Top backgrounds. Right. And I would like to think that I was there for them as a counselor yeah. and as their, um, uh, as their friend, 
you know. And as uh, a mentor, but, you were the one that made that. You know, some people need to have someone that makes a difference. Right. And I think it. that all of us need each other. I, I think agree. it's not just people. We need the animals in the and the bees and the monarch butterflies and everything that works in sync with our Lord. And I talk God. to frogs. Okay. I have a frog pond in my weekend place. Oh, you do a big artificial one, but it looks yes. like, and well, last I think summer they I had 21 it. frogs. There was oh my God. sit on the bench with me. I'm not kidding you. When people think it's crazy, but you're an animal person, you'll get this. He would sit there and he would go, or we would talk to <laughs> each other. I didn't really. Oh, understand. I believe that. Oh, I believe that. I think that there's in it. You can't beat an animal's instinct. And, you know, thank you that they know. I mean, my my little Toby, my dog, he was an Italian Volpino. We rescued him. He was badly abused and found him on the street. He went on my mother's bed. On my mother's bed when my mother was passing away, my and I came back yeah. from Lincoln Center, and I must shout out to the Lincoln Center staff uh, for getting me an airplane and everything to, for getting me at my mother's bedside before she passed away. But my dog Toby, you know, she, he took my shift. I said, "Now come on, I have I built a guest house for my parents in the back of our my home here," and I said, "Now come on, Toby, let's go by Daddy." And Toby never to Norman rescued him. Norman was his main squeeze. Yeah, yeah. And he never left my mother's side. He would get off of her bed and go potty. And then he'd run back into the guest house and go lay on her bed. And he'd never jump on her. He laid by her feet. He knew she was, it was the, those last five days. So he basically took my shift. He took and then I thought, he was doing, I, you at 3 30 in the morning, he was doing a job. He was working. I tell he you, he had a purpose. Was, and you to, yeah, you have to God spelled that. backwards, Wendy. A person told me this, God spelled backwards as God, Concetta. And it's like, duh, where was oh, I living right. for all it's these years? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't I, have thought of something yeah, that so brilliant. And I it's true that, because there's that unconditional love that animals have. Right. That's why all of our hearts, human hearts, animal hearts, yeah. you know, and then we'll look at those wonderful whales and dolphins and porpoises that are being so abused and so misused. Absolutely. And those man, majestic waters and oceans, whatever, all of our hearts beat as one. None of us are separate. We're all part of this universal yes, experience, are. isn't it? I think we are anyway. But you know what? That somebody like you can share that. You know, you're speaking this out there and people are hearing it. And it's anyone who knows me, it's my mantra all the time. All right. I, um, I've devoted my life. I love animals. The AIDS organization I was with, Pet Owners with AIDS Resource Service, we took care of the pets of anyone that had HIV or AIDS. Oh, we wow. We were very busy. We had 250 volunteers. Oh, my God. This, Beautiful. I tell you this because I say this to my husband all the time. In this world, you have to be connected to all the living things that are around you. Yeah, all right. They, they may not have the same set of signals that we have, but guess what? They have incredible signals. That dog that sat by your mother. Yeah, Toby. Days at Toby at Toby knew. He and, did know. Right. Toby, Toby knew. And you know, they couldn't talk in the language like you and I, but Toby knew. And their instincts are so finely honed. You know, we talk about all the time. When my daughter comes home, my dog, when she walks into the lobby of the building, and I am on the 10th floor. He starts wow. whispering. There's no oh, way yes. he could smell her or hear her or any of those things. He knows when she walks through it. And there's a million people that could tell you that are animal people. They all have stories. Oh, like they this. all have these stories. And not only and the, the those of us living in California, oh, yeah, I mean, cool. I know that your, your dogs and your cats know when a quake is about to go. I totally true. They know the vibe yeah. they know. And before Norman and I even feel, you know, the house rock and roll as it is in some of those aftershocks, they know it before it happens. They sense it because they are so part of the earth's energy. Thank you know, you. we, we are always, if we are lucky enough to have our appendages and we can walk and we can be part of the travel, you know, we're travelers on this on this planet. We're all yeah, travelers. All we are all just passing through too. Absolutely. And, and I think they're closest to it 
because the, those paws pick up so much. The they are into the, they're on the grass, they're on the mountains, they're on the hills, they're in your backyard. That you're is a good point. I never thought of that. Their proximity of closeness to the ground. To the planet. The, and that, yeah, they're closest. They to the feel planet. the earth's heartbeat. Wow. I you think poetry, they feel the earth's heartbeat. Poetry, Concetta. That is like. They feel the heartbeat of the earth. Wow. That's the only thing I can, I can, you know, liken it to uh, in a, in a poetic way. In, in a way that we can, you have been absolutely so delightful. Um, oh, thank you. So have you, Wendy. So have you. Stream. We couldn't meet in person and, and here we but are. We will. When I come to New York, we'll yeah. go to lunch. We'll get the doc doll, Lori Towers with us. Well, absolutely. And you have to know, and anyone will tell you this about me, my guests that come from LA to New York, I do meet for lunch. I don't just say oh, it. Oh, I, I, I meet for drinks. I meet for lunch. Thank I love you. going to parties. Good. Well, then we have to plan one. That would be lovely. And I thank you again. Uh, I heard so many beautiful things. I've seen thank your you. show. And you're so generous and gracious Thank because you, oh you do come, you come from the heart. That so is, that, that is exactly where I come from. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing all about your next, your next whatevers. Well, you know, that's up to, that's up to the right. universe. You know, and I hope it's something it wonderful that I can share with everybody and thank everybody for watching the show. And thank you for enjoying my work all of these years because I love my work. I love doing what I do. And um, I thank my mother and father for all of that and thank all these people that have taken the time like you, Wendy, uh, to share my story. And this would never have happened without as again, you know, three's the charm. So I'm going to mention her name, Lori Towers again. Lori Towers and honestly, Concetta, let's, let's put our cards on the table here. It was a pandemic that had me start doing all of these streaming shows. Really? I had a, a, di a di very different life prior to it. My whole life changed because of it. And our wow. whole world changed. But like you, I know you do this. You take the good out of the situation. And look what we had happened today. Right? A here. rainbow. A we had an indoor rainbow. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today and for joining us on our rainbow. We'll be back next week. And take care of yourselves and do something good for yourself today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.